भास्कर सर सर आई मेक यू एज ऑडिबल यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल आई थिंक वन मिनट सर कैन यू आर यू एबल टू शेयर योर पीपीटी सर जस्ट वन स्क्रीन प्लीज चेक So, sir, speaker is ready. Ah, yes, sir. Manjur, available. Ready? Is the presentation is also ready? Ah, yes, sir. It is ready, sir. Oh. You need to uh, you need to uh, enable that share st- screening. Okay. Is it sir? one one minute? So one minute. No, host uh, that. सर प्लीज चेक नाउ सर भास्कर सर या इट इज ओके नाउ आई हैव शेयर्ड द स्क्रीन इज इट विजिबल नो सर इट इज स्टिल इट्स अबाउट टू शेयर आई थिंक इट विल टेक टाइम आई थिंक Side, uh, it is messages come. Ah, yeah. Now it is shared. Uh, it is visible, sir. Your screen is visible, sir. Uh, is my camera on? No, sir. Your camera is not on. camera uh, is on no your camera is off sir your camera is off my camera is on na no? it is showing here no, sir, your, your your camera is off and your camera is not visible here that's okay professor the presentation is visible right yeah yeah presentation is visible sir okay youtube uh, streaming you share it person ah yes sir i'll do it i'll do it hmm. i am baskar sir's mic uh, is some problem there you are yeah is it audible everything is fine now uh, no sir uh, i think uh, uh, baskar sir will uh, rejoin once one, once again professor majnis is it okay for you manjis ah yes sir it is uh, proper proper na no? it is visible yeah yeah it is visible and, very much visible and aud- audible also ah, yes it is audible also and your video is also on uh, yeah. if you comfortable sir if you are okay with video on you can or else you can uh, you know, what i'll do because uh, since band uh, we are having some internet issue in our college due to air yes, show sir, sir. Okay. this is aero india you know that thing so in between during presentation i'll switch off the uh, this one uh, my okay, video sir. so so that consumption is less okay yeah yeah please, please. Uh, so that you can there there will be proper streaming okay that is the thing okay okay uh, yes sir not and much. and at the very uh, okay uh, so, i'll I'll, uh, yeah. i'll just give you the give the introduction and then you yeah, can yeah, yeah, yeah. very uh, very good morning to all the participants 
uh, welcome to the day three uh, session one of this uh, STTP program sponsored by EISTE, organized from Department of Mechanical Engineering, NHC. Uh, today we have a session speaker by name Baskar Jyoti Bora, uh, who is working in uh, Energy Institute, Bangalore, as an assistant professor. Uh, Sir has completed his PhD in Mechanical Engineering, IIT Guwahati. Uh, completed his M.Tech in Thermal Power Engineering from NIT Sincher and completed his B.E. in Mechanical Engineering, Assam Engineering College, Guwahati University. Sarah has around two years of industrial experience and 10 years of teaching experience. Sarah's uh, is, uh, stream of interest is on alternate fuels for transportation, geothermal energy systems, materials for energy systems, automobile engineering, engineering mechanics, and so on. Uh, he is received as a Young Scientist Fellowship Award under a Department of Science and Technology in 2014. Sarah has published around more than 20 uh, journal paper, uh, more than 20 papers in national, international journal con papers and conferences. Sarah has completed. Uh, Sarah has, uh, Sarah has uh, one book chapter in his name and uh, attended many workshops. Uh, many conferences also. And uh, Sir is a lifetime member for American Society of Mechanical Engineers and also a lifetime member for Ma American Society of Civil Engineers. And is also, also an official reviewer for the journals like Renewable Energy, Fuels, Energy Conversion, and Management. And uh, his, he has a future plan uh, in the research stream of uh, development of emission control devices, development of low cost water filtering unit, development of low cost power generation system supervising R&D projects, conduct of short-term training programs and courses, and many more. So, Baskar, sir, uh, we welcome you uh, for this STTP program, sir. Thank you for your time, and uh, the session is over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you, uh, Professor Maznis BC, uh, Eastern Professor of New Horizon College, and Professor uh, Dr. K. Gopal, Associate Professor, uh, who is the coordinator for this program that is on uh, hybrid renewable energy system and waste to energy and uh, challenges and sustainable development uh, for biomass and biogas. So I'd like to thank the authorities of the New Horizon College for organizing such a wonderful event on uh, that is funded by AICT. So today I will be discussing about the uh, standardization standardization of the specification of a biogas run dual fuel diesel engine for stationary application actually how you are going to do that in the field okay in actual condition how you are going to do that this is one thing and uh, another thing is that uh, during my presentation due to this uh, internet issue i'll just uh, switch off my video kindly bear with me, that thing with me So th this is all about this, uh, your uh, power generation. The idea is about power generation in rural, for rural applications. Okay, that is, uh, that is the theme behind this research. And this research was funded by DRDO, okay, Defense Research Development Organization, the funding we have received from DRDO for coordinating this. And uh, uh, since I had a previous experience in industry, that is in Cummins, uh, in internal combustion engine. So during, uh, so as a uh, service manager and service engineer, so that knowledge was very helpful in in developing some new concepts about this uh, biogas run dual fuel diesel engine. So. So this will be the outline of my presentation. Something about the introduction. Uh, we'll uh, will de I'll discuss about the different policies and the, uh, about something about biogas and about how it is uh, needs to be used in internal combustion engines. Then about the pro uh, what actual problem we are having and how we have deal with that problem. And then about the uh, about the setup that we are ha we are having and that was similar to that is available in day-to-day -day life 
that the setup that we have considered that is available in the day-to-day uh, -day applications in rural areas. And after that, something we'll discuss about the results and discussion, then conclusion and the scope, scope of the future work. So this will be the outline of the presentation. As we know that uh, there are two forms of uh, energy sources available. One is the conventional source, that is the fossil fuels, and that is the uh, coal, natural gas, oil that comes under that, and of course, renewable and uh, nuclear energy also. And in the other segment that we are having is a renewable energy source. Okay, so these are uh, non renewable sources due to the overuse and the rise uh, uh, in pollution. We, we have to move towards the renewable source. So, renewable sources are, as we know, as we all know, that it is solar, hydropower, geothermal, wind energy, and of course, biomass. So, this biomass is having a uh, tremendous potential okay so uh, tremendous potential and that can be understood by the different biofuel policies that has been implemented across the globe as well as in india also so these are the different policies uh, that has been implemented say uh, like the energy independence and security act of 2007 that uh, for usa or we can uh, for the european union that is the directive of 2003 to 30 and like the goal and target that that is the indicative of the biofuel blending okay and for say for the country like france we have the finance bill that was uh, uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, of 2019. So that uh, according to that uh, bill, there is a requirement of 7.9 percent biofuel uh, blending in motor fuels uh, for 2019, or and we then need to acquire that thing up to 8.2 percent in 2020. Similarly, as we go down the list. So, uh, like Brazil, uh, they have uh, implemented a policy okay, uh, that is aiming to reduce the carbon emission um, by 2028. So, these are the different biofuel policies, uh, glimpses, I should say, a glimpse of the different biofuel policies that are implemented across the globe. And for India, uh, we are having this uh, Pradhan Mantri uh, Jeff Indhan Bhattan Anukul uh, Fasul Aves. Okay, that, that is uh, that is uh, uh, that is aiming for the uh, production of uh, second generation of bioethanol. Okay, production of seven uh, second generation of bioethanol, and that can be blended with petrol. And that can be blended with petrol. And recently, say two days back, we went for a uh, for for signing a MOU with HPCL. Okay, uh, in with HPCL, and there I have seen that they are actively working on the 2G biotechnol on the production of 2G biotechnols. Then uh, another important policy that is, uh, I should say. Uh, important policy for an ethanol that is the national biofuel policy of 2018 that is targeting that has proposed for blending of 20% uh, ethanol in petrol uh, and blending of biodiesel uh, in diesel uh, that is 5% uh, blending by 2030 since uh, India, uh, India is a developing country. We are uh, we are dependent on oil imports, so we want to reduce that dependency. So one way is by doing blending, doing blending. That is one way, and some of the policies that is related, that is uh, that is that is matching with the title of our uh, of our team of our this program. That is. Uh, the new national biogas and organic manure program uh, that is uh, in sponsored by uh, MNRE, that is the biogas production of 2018 and uh, biomass-based co-generation. 
So that is uh, from the Bagasi and Agro base. So that is, uh, uh, that is again sponsored by MNRE of 2020. So, uh, so these are the some of the important policies and hope I hope that this policy implementation of uh, these policies uh, will revolutionize the uh, the uses of industry. Now coming to the uh, something of the biomass energy. So biomass energy that uh, that is available in uh, in three different forms, as we can see, it is available in three different forms. One is the uh, solid, that is the wood pellets and briquettes, and one in form of the liquids, that is alcohol, biodiesel, bio oil, and of course in the form of gaseous fuel. So in the form of gaseous fuel, uh, we are having uh, we are having producer gas and biogas. We are having producer gas and biogas. So biogas, biogas, uh, biogas is uh, produced from anaerobic digestion, may, anaerobic digestion of biomass, and it mainly contains methane and carbon dioxide. So probably some of the speakers uh, have also explained this, discuss on this. So, um, it has a calorific value of 19 to uh, 35.8 megajoules, and uh, a period of minimum 15 days is required that enables the anaerobic uh, bacteria to convert organic mass to um, uh, biogas, and, and, and any as well as human waste, agriculture, crop residue, municipal waste, and these are some of the excellent feedstock for biogas production. And biogas is also known as, uh, biogas is also known as Mars gas, fuel gas, swamp gas, sewer gas, wet gas, and uh, in India it is known as gober gas. Uh, it can be an excellent fuel for, can be an excellent fuel uh, for the um, engines, internal combustion, gas turbines, fuel cells, boilers, industrial heaters, or for manufacturing, uh, ma manufacturing chemicals. So, uh, so this bi biogas technology is extremely appropriate uh, to the ecological and economic demands of the future. So, if we come to the main applications, main applications, so biogas is uh, predominantly used for cooking, lighting, automotive uh, power production. So in case of power production, in case of production, we need some prime mover. We need some prime mover. So that prime mover uh, is nothing internal combustion engines, internal combustion engines. In internal combustion, there are categories of engines, two categories of engines we are having. One is the spark ignition engine and another is the compression ignition engine. Spark ignition engine is nothing but the petrol engine and compression ignition engine is the diesel engine. So this biogas, this biogas is having a octane number, high octane number of 130. So octane number, what does that indicate? Octane number indicate that, the octane number indicate that it has a high uh, anti knock property. Anti knock property that means it can withstand high compression. So that is what it is indicating. This biogas, one of the properties is that it is having a high, uh, uh, high octane rating. And due to that uh, property, uh, uh, due to that property, the biogas was first used in spark ignition engines, spark ignition engines. Uh, however, when it was used, uh, that derating, that means uh, that power, that is loss of power was observed by different researchers. This is one thing. And another thing that was observed that rough engine operation was reported. And the, as a result of this, there is a, there is a deterioration of engine performance. Okay. 
so these are the some of the fact that was observed and why it is so because spark ignition engines are extremely sensitive to the composition of the fuel we are extremely sensitive to the composition of the fuel and as we know this uh, this uh, this biogas this uh, the quantity of methane that is being generated varies from day to day it is not constant okay it is not constant that means methane composition may vary suppose today it may be 64% today uh, tomorrow it may be 59% so that also affects the of the engine air ignition is extremely sensitive to uh, composition so uh, we are having another type of engine that is uh, uh, compression ignition engine and this compression ignition engine are known as diesel engine so in diesel engine uh, there there is a there is a different method in which you can run gaseous fuel in diesel engine and that is known as the dual fuel diesel engine that mo uh, mode is known as dual fuel mode so in mode what we are going to do in dual uh, suppose a fuel that is having a high is usually inducted into a compressed ignition engine with the incoming air through the intake manifold so as you can see in the diagram Oh, as you can see in the diagram here itself. So in the intake manifold, we need to induct biogas plus air. Okay, in diesel engine. So initially, that during the suction stroke, this uh, the, this homogeneous mixture of biogas and air is being inducted into the combustion chamber. Then, uh, then since uh, uh, this. Uh, the combustion process that will initiate the combustion process and uh, this Hello, Baskar, uh, sir. Yeah, there's some disruption in the internet signal. Okay. So okay. Uh, can you please again uh, allow me to share? Sure, sure. Because sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, my sincere apologies to you all because uh, because of the this Aero India, we are having some uh, uh, internet issues. Okay, from last yesterday only it has started, so that is why we are having some problem with that. Okay, kindly bear that thing. So, 
uh, I'll continue. I was discussing something about the dual fuel engines. So in dual fuel engines, a gaseous mixture of uh, a gaseous mixture of high octane fuel is inducted into the uh, comp uh, compression ignition engine with a with air. So during the suction stroke, we know uh, in normal diesel engine only air is being sucked. So in case of uh, dual fuel engine, air biogas will be inducted during the suction stroke. Then it will be compressed and some amount of liquid fuel towards the end of the compression stroke uh, will, be, will be injected. And this liquid fuel serves as a ignition source. And as a result of which the combustion initiates and, and it propagates to the uh, gaseous fuel. This is how uh, a dual fuel uh, engine works. And uh, uh, there are some uh, there are some uh, modifications that we need to do for a diesel engine if you want to run in a dual fuel mode. That means uh, we need to uh, we need to install a gas mixer and a fuel control mechanism. So gas mixer is not uh, nothing but it is similar to that of a carburetor that will supply that will supply homogeneous mixture according to the load, according to what type of load we are having. According to that, it will supply the quantity of the gaseous fuel air mixture that is required. This is one thing. And this gaseous fuel is known as primary fuel as the engine mainly runs on it. And the liquid fuel uh, is known as the pilot fuel, which ignites the gaseous fuel. So, um, uh, there are some, uh, there are, you can see there are few, like uh, there are a good number of advantages that a dual fuel diesel engine is having. That is, that means localized fuel can be used and variation of the fuel source and this carbon material. And uh, since the engine will run mainly on the gaseous fuel, there will be minimum requirement of the liquid fuel. So in this, in that way, we can save uh, liquid fuel, okay? So, and no cylinder modification is required and flexibility of operation in diesel as well as in dual mode. Suppose the gaseous fuel, uh, we are having very, uh, there is no uh, supply of gaseous fuel. Then we can again convert, uh, we can run in diesel models and there will be reduction in NOx and particulate emissions. These are the, some of the advantages and uh, disadvantages that is, it is having is the uh, low engine output, a high carbon monoxide emission, and it cannot operate under dual fuel mode. It cannot operate with, without pilot fuel. So this is typical P theta diagram that is nothing but the uh, cylinder pressure and crank angle diagram. So in case of a normal, uh, you can see to the left, in case of a uh, diesel, if a diesel engine is running it only with this diesel fuel that is in loan mode, that is, it is having a single fuel that is the liquid fuel. Uh, it will, it will follow the trend that is shown in the, uh, as is shown in the diagram, that is the uh, pressure crank angle diagram. That is a important tool for diagnosing for diagnosing the uh, combustion characteristics of a of a internal combustion engine. So here you can see at A point, the point of in injection of liquid fuel, then uh, there is a small delay. The combustion starts only at uh, B point, okay, at this point. And that we know that is nothing but the, this duration is nothing but the ignition delay. Then BC represents the premix combustion and uh, premix combustion and C points at uh, ends at the point at which the maximum pressure, you can see in the diagram, the maximum pressure has been attained. That is the end of the premix combustion stage. And then we are having a, uh, another stage that is known as the control combustion. Then we are having the late combustion. However, in case of, uh, in case of uh, dual fuel engine, we are having a different trend. We are having a different trend like AB is a, uh, pilot ignition delay, this period is longer compared to this, since here the amount of uh, air is less, 
since we are inducting some gaseous fuel will be there. So that is why this phase is somewhat longer. Then we are having a small phase that is the uh, pilot fuel combustion, premix combustion phase. Then we are having CD. You can see in the diagram the CD that is the uh, primary small phase that is the primary fuel ignition delay that is for the gaseous fuel. Then we are having the rapid combustion fuel. Uh, and and then we are having the diffusion combustion. So uh, so the the physics is like this. So initially this uh, biogas air mixture will be there. Biogas air mixture will be there. And once we spray this uh, liquid fuel, that will st start ign igniting at those point at which localized temperature is higher. So the, as a result of this, there will be multiple sparks will be there that will that will act as a source of ignition that will act as a source of ignition. Okay, and an advantage of this dual fuel is that uh, uh, that uh, in this type of engine we can use uh, you can use uh, fuels of different flammability limit. Okay, uh, you can use uh, fuels of uh, different flammability limit and another thing advantage we are having that uh, this dual fuel technology is an effective technique in controlling the NOx and uh, shoot emission. So it is an effective technique for controlling the emissions also. So this is one thing. Then uh, 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 there is something called low efficiency and high emission that is reported in case of dual fuel diesel engine. The, that means uh, we can understand the, um, the diesel engine in, uh, is predominantly meant for running diesel fuel. Diesel fuel. So that uh, so like, so, the, so the thing is that uh, what I mean to uh, communicate is that uh, this diesel is having some specific uh, specific chemical properties. Okay, chemical properties, and based on those chemical properties, this operating parameters, uh, operating parameters are standardized. That means uh, uh, standardized means that operating parameters, that means the uh, compression ratio, injection timing, injection pressure, all these are, uh, all these are standardized meeting the, uh, meeting the uh, requirements of the, of the diesel fuel. So they're standardized in such a way so that maximum efficiency we can draw while running that, you know, while running diesel in diesel engine. Now, if I have to run any other fuel, if I have to run any other fuel in diesel engine, I need to standardize those operating parameter. I need to standardize those operating par parameter. Without that, the, without that, the best efficiency I can't get or a comparable efficiency to that what a diesel engine is uh, 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 diesel engine is having i can get suppose a diesel engine is having say around uh, for a, for example it is having 30% efficiency now if you are running with biodiesel or say any other fuel say biodiesel i may get efficiency of 25% so if you have to match the same efficiency i need to standardize this operating parameters so uh, so so this uh, compression ratio, so a little bit discussion about the compression ratio, this I need to discuss, uh, discuss because this thing we are going to, uh, we are, means I'm going to discuss, uh, this will be important, this knowledge of this compression ratio and injection timing will be important for understanding um, how we are going to standardize the, uh, the operating parameters. So compression ratio, as we know, that is nothing but the, maximum volume by minimum volume so here you can see uh, this is uh, uh, this is the combustion chamber that combustion chamber consists of the cylinder head here is the cylinder head and here is the piston head these are the two extreme positions okay and the piston will move from bdc to tdc from BDC to TDC. This is, and there is a small space is there that is the clearance volume, uh, the space within which the compression will take place. 
so compression ratio according to the definition is the maximum volume by minimum volume so the volume uh, the volume that is swept by the piston from bdc to tdc is known as swept volume and small space is there that is that volume is known as clearance volume now volume maximum by volume minimum volume maximum is nothing but the swept volume plus clearance volume divided by clearance volume that also we can signify as volume at uh, bdc divided by volume at tdc and uh, uh, if you for uh, suppose for the auto cycle this is the efficiency term minus r that is the compression our gamma that is gamma is nothing but the ratio of the specific heat minus 1 so uh, in this uh, in this uh, plot we can see efficiency is plotted against the compression ratio and what we can find that with the increase of the compression ratio the efficiency is increasing this is because with the increase of the compression ratio the reduces and this clearance volume is reducing so as a result of with the uh, fuel air mixture are compressed to a higher pressure and as a result of the fluid friction the temperature inside will increase further and increase the probability of getting better combustion so this is the role that compression ratio has to play and next is the uh, about injection timing so about injection timing about injection timing so for injection we are having a component that is injector and in that we are having the plunger spring then that is uh, connected rocker lever then piston pin and uh, push rod sorry and that push rod is uh, connected to the cam so uh, that cam uh, that eccentricity that we are having in the cam load that decides the injection timing so suppose the normal timing is uh, 23 degree before tdc example i have taken so if i have to uh, uh, this is the standard timing suppose this is the standard one and suppose uh, uh, suppose this is a standard timing and suppose i need to advance the advance the timing advance the timing that means with respect to the crank angle it will be 20 degree before tdc suppose that is what i mean and and retarded timing retarded timing that means it is say 25 degree before tdc so so this is the top date sensor so we know that uh, from our knowledge of uh, internal combustion engine that towards the end of the compression stroke the fuel is injected so standard timing is 23 degree before tdc for a single cylinder engine it is 23 degree tdc if we are injecting 20 degree that means uh, 20 degree that means uh, that means uh, it will be uh, uh, for some fuel we need to inject uh, advance uh, means timing we need to uh, inject uh, advance that means 20 degree before tdc suppose we are injecting that if you try to understand that means uh, the temperature at that time will be lower compared to uh, 20 degree tdc and if you are injecting say retarded timing that is 25 the temperature will be at a higher uh, will be more okay the compression that means the position of the cylinder will be somewhat say 23 degree it is here uh, and uh, for 20 degree it is here and for 25 degree uh, sorry 25 degree it is here and uh, 20 degree it is somewhat here so when the co compression uh, piston is here that means the temperature within the combustion chamber will be lower compared to 20 uh, 23 degree and if it is at uh, 25 degree it will be higher but the thing is that for different fuel it is different so for gaseous fuel uh, for gaseous fuel we need to advance for most of the gaseous fuel or for liquid fuel say some for biodiesel sometimes we need to advance or sometimes we need to retard that depends upon the what is the uh, what is the composition of the fuel and what is the combustion characteristics it follows 
So if you are uh, advancing the fuel, say gaseous fuel, it will have sufficient time for mixing of the air and the uh, air and the uh, gaseous fuel. Okay. Or if you are injecting in a retarded timing, then the atmosphere inside the combustion chamber will be at a higher temperature com compared to 23 degree before TDC. So in respect to this, this is how a injector, injector here you can see the injector is uh, operating. So three holes are there at 120 degree apart and this is the spray angle, okay? 120 degree apart. So this is how injector operates. So so these things uh, we have discussed something about the operating parameters. Now, uh, if you go to the literature, if you try to go through the literature of the biogas run dual fuel engine, we can see in most cases, in most cases, the compression ratio, uh, ratio as well as inject, uh, injection timing is fixed. This is one thing, this is one observation. And another thing is that in most cases, this, uh, uh, this uh, if you consider the diesel fuel, if you consider the diesel fuel in most cases, uh, the pilot fuel, sorry, in most cases diesel is the pilot fuel. This is one thing. And experience what they have done, they raw biogas and sim simulated that means in the uh, and carbon dioxide that is available in pressurized cylinder and they have tried to vary the composition. They have tried to vary the composition. So uh, here also uh, we can see uh, in most cases they have tried uh, say to advance and compression ratio is almost fixed except one. So similarly here also. So after going through the literature, uh, after going through the literature, what we have, uh, what we have found that standardization of the operating parameters is not reported, okay, in any literature. So, uh, so for that, uh, what we have done, we have taken a engine. We have first considered a specification of the engine that is available in the rural areas. So we have first tried to find out what type of engine that is available in the uh, rural areas. And based on the specification of uh, that engine, we have considered uh, we have considered a research test engine that that is uh, that uh, closely matches that specification. And for optimization, we have considered the optimization parameter that compression ratio, injection timing, and uh, uh, primary fuel is biogas and pilot fuel. What what uh, in this case study we have considered the diesel, biodiesel, and emulsified uh, biodiesel. And uh, this uh, optimization we have done on the basis of the performance analysis, emission analysis, and of course thermodynamic analysis. So uh, this is a optimization that we have done. So this is our roadmap, how, what we have done. So uh, and the engine we are having, the, the test engine that we are having is a research in a test engine that is a kiloscar made, okay? And it is a, having a rated output of 3.5 kilowatt at uh, 1500 RPM. And bore and stroke it is having uh, 87.5 and 110 mm. Uh, and this has a facility of uh, compression uh, ratio adjustment and as well as injection time. So this is the setup that uh, we are having. So this is the setup we, uh, for using, for in order to use biogas in the existing uh, in the existing setup, we need to modify it. So for that, what we have done for uh, that the setup we are having, we have installed a Venturi gas mixture. So Venturi gas mixture. So in the Venturi uh, gas mix, uh, mixture, you can see this is the Venturi gas mixture. So here inside the section is like that, and we have used the concept of Venturi meter and Bernoulli's theorem so that the 
pressure difference will be created and as a result of which the mixing will be proper okay so in this way we have uh, these are the two inlets for biogas and this is the inlet for air and inside uh, if you go uh, if you try to observe the inside sector it is somewhat uh, a venturi is there so this venturi helps in creating the pressure difference and as well as mixing of the fuel this is the thing then we are having a fuel control mechanism fuel control mechanism uh, this is to protect the engine from over speeding so when we will uh, when we are going to supply biogas uh, so generally what it is done the engine is initially run with diesel and so that the operating temperature are rich and conditions are stable temperature are stable so once that is being reached biogas is being supplied by right and, uh, and once the water supplied uh, to the engine so at the beginning now the amount of energy that is being supplied is more than it is required because it is getting the biogas and as well as the uh, uh, diesel so the uh, suddenly while operating the rpm shoots up so in order to control that we are having the fuel control mechanism so that what it does it um, uh, it lowers the amount of pilot fuel that is being sent okay so uh, the uh, it lowers the amount of pilot fuel that is being sent initially then uh, once the rpm reduces then uh, we can we can release the fuel control mechanism okay so this is one thing and then we have the y connector for distribution equal distribution of the biogas from the biogas balloon so here we are having this balloon in the setup we can see this balloon is there that is connected to a biogas flow meter that is connected to the uh, venturi gas mixer that is being sent to the engine okay and the engine is coupled with a dynamometer then it is having the rpm sensor and the load sensor are there and there is a provision as i have told you for changing the compression ratio and inject injection timing and we are having two sensors here pressure sensors uh, uh, one is a cylinder pressure sensor we are having one is a cylinder pressure sensor and another uh, two sensors are there one is connected to the head of the piston another to the body so this is one and for the energy analysis we are having the calorimeter that is installed and there are six uh, temperature sensors are there as you can see actually five are there so five sensors are there uh, and these are nothing but thermocouples so they give the uh, they give the temperature at different locations so this is all about the setup now uh, first what we have done uh, since there is no literature that is reported on uh, on on the optimization of the operating parameters for diesel fuel as pilot fuel so for that uh, uh, what we have done we have uh, we have considered this experimental matrix it, uh, we have considered this experimental matrix that is uh, we are using pilot fuel that is diesel and uh, uh, these are the compression ratio that we are going to vary 16 to 18 injection timing we are going to vary from 30, uh, 23 to 32 degrees then is done these are the different fuel characterization properties we have obtained and for uh, for emission analysis we have used the uh, testo gas analyzer that follows the AST, ASTDM uh, uh, d652 norms so uh, so as you can see from this uh, analysis as you can see uh, we have plotted this uh, brake thermal efficiency against engine load so uh, we can see from this uh, analysis as we increase the compression ratio in all the cases say for different injection timing you can see higher compression ratio results in uh, better efficiency and as i have told you that high compression ratio that means pressure and temperature within the uh, cylinder it will raise and that will result in, in better combustion 
And another thing we have observed while uh, as we have advanced the injection timing, uh, the best uh, the best um, efficiency that we have obtained in uh, at uh, injection timing of 29 degree before TDC. Okay, and if we increase further, the efficiency drops. Okay, that can be observed for other compression ratio also. So this is one thing. Next, we have considered something about exhaust gas temperature. So, if we consider the exhaust gas temperature, it increases with load both for diesel and for both for diesel and dual mode. Uh, this is one thing. Uh, but the exhaust temperature of uh, of the uh, dual fuel mode is higher compared to diesel. This is due to the uh, low. Uh, there is a low combustion velocity of the biogas. Okay, and this results in late combustion and combustion products comes out of there uh, at a higher temperature than compared to diesel. Now we have uh, seen that uh, if we increase the compression ratio to from uh, 16 to 17, there is a drop in the uh, drop in the temperature. Uh, and similarly, from 17 to 17.5, there is a small drop. And from 17.5 to 18, there is a 5.16% uh, drop in the exhaust temperature. That means that that drop, uh, since there is a drop in that, that means that energy that, uh, that will be available in the shaft, okay, shaft or coolant. So he, if we, for higher compression ratio, there is a, uh, you can see, 5.61% is dropped. So higher compression ratio we have seen that if you compare the efficiency, there is an increase. So that is rightly it is indicating an advancement also. Uh, injection timing indicates the drop in the temperature. So next thing is that regarding the li liquid fuel uh, substitution. Okay, so that is how much saving of liquid fuel that can be obtained while we are using the gaseous fuel. So it, has, uh, so it is found from the experiment that as we go for higher compression ratio, the substitution is more. As you can see from 16 to uh, 18, as we move from 16 to 18, you can see that uh, maximum 79.46 substitution we have obtained. run by the uh, with and uh, and uh, that is the share of the energy. Next, we can see uh, in case of uh, uh, in case of injection time 29 degree before TDC, uh, here uh, maximum saving uh, like uh, is uh, 26 saving is 53.17. So that, that is the uh, Best saving we have obtained. Okay, the uh, uh, ignition delay. Ignition delay is a time between time interval between the injection of the fuel and the ignition of the fuel. So this is the time interval. And from the uh, from the observation from this uh, curve, what we have found from this plot is plotted against engine load. So in this case, we have seen that with a load. The delay is reducing. That is expressed in terms of degree crank angle. However, the ignition delay for uh, for dual fuel engine, that is biogas and dual fuel engine, is higher compared to diesel. Since uh, the uh, uh, there are a lot of factors like like biogas is uh, is having CO2, and this CO2 uh, uh, causes some sinking effect that means lowers the temperature of the combustion chamber so this is one thing and uh, uh, the kinemic uh, the chemical kinematics that are related to to the ignition of the fuel in case of um, biogas and dual fuel engine the speed is very much low compared to diesel so these are the factors however uh, if we increase the compression ratio we can reduce the emission delay so that has been reported here and uh, there is uh, one thing that has been reported that is that can be found out and 
and there is a, a rise of uh, emission delay with the advancement also. So this is one thing. Now coming to the uh, cylinder, cylinder pressure and crank angle curve. So these two are very important curves for understanding the combustion characteristics for com understanding the combustion characteristics. So as we can see, this uh, 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 as we can see for that the net risk, uh, the peak of the net read, uh, release uh, net heat release rate curves uh, for dual fuel are comparatively lower compared to diesel. You can see. Uh, this is one thing we observe. This is for dual fuel and this is for diesel. So this is one thing. And another thing we observe, uh, the, the, uh, there is a shift. There is a shift of the, uh, the peak of the dual fuel curve towards this direction. You can see towards the right. Okay. And if you increase the comp uh, compression ratio, the shift is towards left. Similarly, in case of uh, a cylinder pressure also, we observe that maximum pressure, maximum pressure that is obtained around 363 degree after TDC. Uh, whereas uh, in case of uh, dual fuel, it is 370, 37, uh, 369 and 368 for compression ratio, uh, compression ratio 18, 17.5, 17, like that. So uh, once we increase the uh, compression ratio, uh, we can, uh, there, is a, there is a possibility of shifting the peak towards the TDC. That is one thing. And if we advance the timing also, there is a, uh, uh, we can see there is a advance, uh, there is shifting of, uh, uh, shifting of uh, this uh, peak of the, uh, uh, peak of the curve, that is the pressure curve towards towards TDC. So as I have gone, gone through the literature, I have found that uh, more closer, that is uh, closer to the TDC, it is, uh, it, is, uh, it is better for the engine so that it can harness more amount of power. If, you, if you, it is away from the TDC, that means, that means, uh, that means uh, uh, it is more into the expansion st stroke has already started, that means, okay. So as a result of that, uh, the, the harnessing of power from the fuel will be less. So uh, this is uh, the uh, curve plotted against the peak cylinder pressure and engine load. And here also we can see uh, for uh, diesel it is higher compared to dual fuel mode. And as we increase the compression ratio and injection timing that uh, peak cylinder pressure increases then something about emissions so emissions in case of dual fuel engines are more compared uh, compared to that of uh, this is because dual fuel mode um, this biogas is already having uh, 40 percent extra co2 because of its composition it is it is composed of uh, methane and carbon dioxide predominantly so as we increase the uh, compression ratio also there is an increase in the uh, emission of CO2 uh, due to better combustion. This is one thing. And another thing we observed that with the advancement of the uh, advancement of the timing also, there is an increase of increases more and uh, the maximum increases at, at 29 degree before TDC and compression ratio of 18. Uh, so similarly for carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon, we found that uh, the trend is like that at, at low load, the emission is higher. As the load is increased, the emission reduces and at higher load, again, it increases. So the emissions uh, compared to the diesel mode, it is higher, okay? It is higher and both for hydrocarbon and as well as for uh, carbon monoxide, but with the increase of higher compression ratio, advancement of injection timing, there uh, we can observe that there is a relative drop emission value. So NOx, another one uh, emission 
a measure that is NOx, and NOx is very harmful to humans. That uh, it can generate uh, ground level ozone that can directly affect the human health. So in NOx, uh, the uh, emission, the trend we observe that is it increases with load. Okay, as dependent phenomena, so it increases with load so at higher load the combustion temperature uh, temperature will be higher so uh, as a result as a result uh, we can observe from the uh, nox emission is higher and this nox emission is controlled by jaldolvic reaction so now for uh, for dual fuel engine the combustion uh, combustion temperature is lower compared to that of diesel engine. As a result, the emissions of uh, uh, NOx are comparatively less compared to that of diesel. But as we increase the compression ratio, there is a rise in, uh, rise in NOx emission that can be observed from all the cases. And with the advancement of also timing, there is a uh, increase in uh, compression ratio. So, this is the things that we observe. Next, another uh, study we have done regarding uh, using different biofuels, different pilot fuels that we have uh, considered. Okay, so and the, and there are different policies or say research uh, research that is going around the world that is advocating the use of use of biofuel. Okay, so like uh, like Mexican airlines they have run. The uh, run the uh, run the airlines with biofuel by blending with ATF aviation turbine fuel. So keeping in that into account, and uh, and so we have uh, considered uh, three um, biofuel that are commonly available, like the rice bran biodiesel, palm oil biodiesel, and pongamia biodiesel. So. Um, so what we have done, we have again characterized their properties and standard injection timing and compressor, uh, compression ratio that is, uh, that is prescribed for the diesel, diesel fuel. We have tried to, com uh, try to compare that performance and what we found out that uh, diesel, uh, the, the, the maximum brake thermal efficiency that we have obtained with diesel is around 28%. Uh, and we have seen for, uh, by using uh, rice bran biodiesel, we obtain a maximum efficiency of 19.97. And for Pongamia, it is around 18.4%. And palm oil methyl ester, it is around 17.4%. Uh, uh, and uh, this is uh, an liquid fuel substitution that is the replacement in case of rice bran biodiesel, we have obtained around 79%. And for palm oil and pongamia, 78 and 77%. These are the, uh, uh, these are the small findings that we observe. And then what we have done, we have opt, uh, after we found that rice bran biodiesel is uh, giving better uh, performance, we have uh, uh, again standardized the, uh, standardized the uh, performance, based uh, performance, uh, standardized the operating parameter, sorry, based on the performance and emission characteristics. And we, uh, we found that uh, we found that uh, this uh, at 29 degree before TDC and uh, and compression ratio 18 we observed the uh, uh, for sorry at uh, injection timing of 32 degree and compression ratio compression ratio of uh, 18 we have observed the best efficiency for rice bran um, biodiesel so. I mean the, uh, so as we move to our uh, roadmap, uh, next is regarding the uh, next is uh, regarding the 
Now, once we found the rice bran biodiesel, we have, once we have optimized the injection timing and compression ratio based on the performance and emission characteristics, uh, we wanted to try with some different concept that is known as the emulsification. Okay, that is known as the emulsification. And uh, uh, so, emulsification is nothing but two municipal fluids such as zil. So it is a mixing of two fluids that is such as diesel and uh, water. Okay, diesel and water. Normally, uh, uh, we know that diesel and water uh, do not mix because of their different density. So for that, we are going to use some emulsifier for that. Okay, Emul uh, we are going to use some sorry surfactant for that. So uh, that I'll discuss. And the advantage of using this emulsified fuel is that is that it enhances the fuel efficiency and reduces the emission. That is, NOx and soot can be further reduced. So that can be further reduced. This is one thing. So now once the once the emulsified fuel, once the emulsified fuel, as you can see, is sprayed inside the combustion chamber. Okay, so sprayed inside the combustion chamber, it will have a uh, this indicate the injector. Okay, and here we are having the emulsified fuel. So this emulsified fuel, if we uh, closely observe there are some small droplets are there and here we are having some big droplets so the there are two types of phase that is the continuous phase and dispersed phase in 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 emulsified fuel in case of emulsified fuel we are having uh, two types of uh, two types of phase that is the continuous phase and the dispersed phase the continuous phase is having the greater volume the continuous phase is having the greater volume and in our case uh, this rice bran biodiesel that represents the continuous volume and dispersed phase uh, dispersed phase is a smaller volume that means the dispersed phase represents the water molecules that dispersed phase represents the water molecules so uh, this is the uh, thing. So, uh, what will happen? What will happen? Uh, means uh, why you are doing this? Because we want uh, we will be using this uh, surfactant that will help in reduction between the, the between the oil uh, between the fuel molecules and water molecules and as a result of which the mixing will be proper that mixing can be measured in terms of a uh, in terms of a scale that is known as height uh, that is known as hlb uh, value that is known as hlb value that is hydro uh, lipophic balance value okay that is uh, uh, that is the hydrolipophic balance value and that is very much important in case of uh, in case of uh, in case of emulsified fuel in case of emulsified fuel uh, it is very much important okay so that is one thing and another thing is that once we spray this fuel inside the combustion chamber so the boiling point of uh, boiling point of the fuel and water are different. So the boiling point of water is lower compared to that of the oil. So once the fuel in, uh, gets injected into the combustion chamber, this uh, water uh, water molecules are there. They will try to evaporate, and as a result, they will try to blow this uh, this fuel particle into small particles and this phenomena is known as uh, uh, this phenomena is known as secondary atomization or micro explosion okay 
and as a result the size of the fuel particles will be decrease further and and during this uh, uh, during this uh, heat transfer process this water molecule will take the heat combustion chamber only so there will be some drop in the uh, temperature of the combustion chamber and that will lead to uh, reduction in the nox emission this is one thing and another thing is that as the um, as the size of the molecule as the size of the um, that means molecule will be smaller compared to this earlier the fuel particle was this size now it has been reduced further okay this is after this primary injection that is the injection that is taking place to the injector it was having this dimension now we are having this dimension so as a result of which as a result of which the if you compare this both the uh, both the uh, both the surface area of this molecule the surface area of this combined molecule is more compared to this single molecule as a result of which the there will be uh, the reaction process will be faster that means this surface will be this surface will be exposed to the air molecules here the surface will be exposed to the air molecules so the reaction will be faster and the combustion uh, uh, combustion will be more proper combustion will be more proper okay uh, and this is one thing but one issue is there with this emulsified fuel that is regarding the stability so for that for that uh, for that uh, stability is one issue uh, 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 Becker in 1965 he uh, he uh, he defined uh, the size of the uh, of the particle that should be within one to six micro uh, you know, micrometer within that size it should be so uh, so he has defined that so try to uh, we'll try to uh, we'll try to one multiply fuel and try to study those uh, those parameters also in our study and for that again for emulsification for emulsification two surfactants are uh, considered one is uh, next is, uh, is the uh, twin 80 and uh, that uh, HLB value of 4.326 is considered based on the previous literature and uh, uh, five percent water uh, so six samples are considered in three samples five percent water is added and uh, in other three samples ten percent water is considered and they're taken in this uh, uh, in this uh, they're having this composition and what once the this for preparing this emulsified fuel first we mix the Two in and span uh, with the with the uh, with the bio, biodiesel and the uh, biodiesel and the water. So first, uh, 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 this span is mixed with uh, pan is mixed with biodiesel separately. Mix with okay. They uh, once they are mixed, they are first mechan uh, mechanical uh, steer. And after that, uh, after that, ultrasonification is done, and then, uh, then slowly the sonification. So, in this way, we get the uh, fuel ready. Once the fuel is ready, then with the help of the inje uh, injector, we try to study the spray pattern with the help of a. Uh, axioscope optical microscope and uh, it has been found that if we increase the increase the emulsification time 
the size of the the size of the mean droplet diameter that is of the uh, of the emulsified fuel that is water in rice burn uh, rice burn by diesel immersion reduces okay that is one observation we we have observed and another thing is that for using uh, for using hlb uh, uh, if we go for hlb uh, 5 and 5% 5 uh, we can 5% water hlb 6 and 5% water uh, we can we can uh, we can obtain the minimum diameter can be obtained so with that we we have uh, that is hlb 6 and uh, 5% water so we have then considered this composition for our future emission testing okay for emission test standard uh, engine testing we have considered this uh, and uh, next we have studied about the stability so in that we have done for short term test and long term test short term we have considered for three hours and long term we have considered for 12 hours so uh, so that is being done and uh, in that we found out uh, we found out that emulsion uh, stability of this two phase uh, uh, water in rice barn uh, that that H, uh, hlb uh, hlb 6 and with 5% water is found to be more stable as we can see uh, that uh, in this diagram we can see the amount that is being separated out okay if we if we keep this in uh, cylindrical drums if you try if you keep this well we can we can observe this separation that is taking place after two hours what is the sediments that are there okay and after three hours this water is clearly visible okay similarly for long term test also we have done and we can find and that hlv 5 with 5 percent water uh, Okay, uh, it will be it will be sorry it will be six with uh, five percent water is uh, that is more stable in both cases you can see long term as well as short term also okay both cases it is stable so uh, is stable so so uh, we. We have then considered uh, this fuel for uh, for the uh, for the engine testing, and here also we have seen we have verified the compression ratio from 18.5 to uh, 18 to 17, and uh, injection timing 23 to 32 degree, and load variation is also there from uh, 20 to 100 percent, and just uh, summarizing the result that uh, the injection timing uh, 29 degree in compression ratio we have uh, obtained the best efficiency okay so 29 and 29 and 29 degree and compression ratio 18 we have uh, we obtained the best efficiency this is the thing and in the norm doubt that uh, higher compression 18 is giving the production and injection timing 29 degree and next is the thermodynamic analysis so thermodynamic analysis that can be done through this is uh, then be done through NL, energy and exercise analysis so this first law quantifies the energy as we know it's quantifies the energy and uh, created or destroyed but it can be changed from one form to another that we all know uh, so however the second law is there that uh, that deals with the quality of the energy okay 
and more, more specifically it is concerned the second law is most concerned with the degradation of the energy during a process the entropy generation or the loss of the then the second law uh, of thermodynamics has been proved to be a powerful tool uh, in optimizing the complex uh, thermodynamics of a system the, and with that uh, we know something about the uh, we know something about the Majnish sir, Majnish sir, hello Majnish sir, hello sir. Hello, Majni sir. Ah, that that uh, it, it got disconnected. That set, yeah, share screen. That you need to allow me. Uh, like another twenty minutes, I'll wind up, sir. Just for two three. So I was discussing something about uh, XRG and uh, it got disconnected. So XRG or ability maximum work potential of a system at any specified state and it represents the uh, upper limit to the amount a device will actually deliver without violating the laws of thermodynamics. And there is a always difference between the actual work and the exercise and the difference represents that associated with the
okay uh, so in case of diesel engines that means in case of internal combustion engines uh, this availability is, ability is uh, destroyed by a number of phenomena such as mixing uh, or friction or say combustion and this uh, this destroyed availability is known as the uh, is known as, uh, as the uh, uh, is termed as the irreversibility which is a source of the defective utilization uh, of fuel in, into mechanical work in in case of uh, spark ignition in case of uh, in internal combustion engines so so in case of uh, internal combustion engines so uh, in our study like in, if we are going to do the energy analysis and exergy analysis in energy analysis we have to consider the what is the amount quantity we need to quantify the fuel energy that is supplied and uh, what is the part of energy that is available in the shaft that is known as the brake power and what is the energy that is taken away by the and what is taken away by the exhaust gases and there will be some uh, also there that is known as unaccounted heat losses due to uh, radiation and all the thing okay so this is as uh, what is given in the uh, internal combustion engine by um, john hayward okay so and in case of uh, in case of exergy analysis fuel availability uh, shaft availability cooling water availability and exhaust gas availability and what is the ability destroyed that's these are the parameters we need to study so with the uh, uh, like we have done for uh, the diesel biodiesel and uh, emulsified fuel so uh, we have done for all the cases and uh, as we uh, we have done for all the cases but i'll discuss with you only the uh, the case of uh, uh, fuel. okay discuss only the case of emulsified fuel so others are similar so the distribution energy you can see and that means power in time through uh, for the various processes at the different compression ratio and injection timing the distribution you can see from this table as well as from the graph okay and um, and the effect of the compression ratio we can we can see that the uh, at say standard injection timing that is 23 degree before TDC, uh, the shaft energy and that, that is the energy that is transferred uh, to the cooling water is it, increased uh, from 17 per, uh, is increased by 17 percent and 3.83 percent for the change of compression ratio from 17 to 18. Okay, that is one thing. However, for the same setting, if you observe the what is the energy that is transferred to the exhaust gas and and the unaccounted energy losses that decreases as we increase the uh, uh, as we increase the compression ratio by five percent and five uh, percent and nineteen point six percent. So in the graph, we can see also we can we can also observe in the graph also. So uh, this is the QS as I told you it represents the it represents the uh, it represents the brake power here you can see with the increase of the compression ratio this brake power is increasing that we that is brake power that is increasing that is the amount of energy the percentage of energy that is being supplied that means uh, harnessing is much better as we increase the compression ratio this is one thing and another thing we observed that present the unaccounted 10 percent that is really being reduced for higher compression ratio that is uh, that is one uh, finding that is one finding and the exhaust gas that is uh, the energy that is taken by the exhaust gas is also being uh, reduces with the increase of compression ratio okay this is one thing and this we have carried out for 
and injection timing we have tried to plot for the different timing and we have to try to see what is the percent of energy that is available in the shaft and in uh, in case of 29 degree uh, maximum we have obtained you can see from this diagram that maximum we have obtained and uh, see, uh, uh, at the same point the amount of energy that is being taken out of the um, uh, exhaust gas is getting reduced okay that is getting reduced that is one thing we observe and this is regarding the exhaust gas temperature also so uh, higher compression ratio results uh, higher compression ratio we we have plotted against the exhaust gas temperature against compression ratio so higher compression ratio results in lowering of the exhaust gas strip temperature this is one observation and resulting the uh, exercise analysis uh, exercise analysis we have carried out that is the uh, what is the percentage that is available percentage exercise that you can obtain from the uh, shaft here also we see it is increasing for uh, it is increasing for a, a higher compression ratio okay exercise ability for the shaft and that is there and this uh, this destruction also is being so thing and that we can uh, the exergetic efficiency from this uh, 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 from this graph that for higher compression ratio the exergetic in more and for 29 degree the highest for all the cases it is highest for all the and this is something regarding the entropy generation entropy generation also we have found that entropy generation reduces for higher compression ratio okay so entropy there is a reduction in and also so so conclusion on the basis of the what we on the basis of the performance and emission analysis the com, uh, the combination of the com, compression ratio 18 and injection timing 29 uh, before um, uh, top dead center is optimum for a biogas run uh, diesel engine using this pilot fuel and this different the comparison study that we have done revealed that rice burn biodiesel performance is better than pungami and palm oil and the com uh, compression ratio 18 32 degree before tdc is found to be optimum for biogas run dual fuel diesel engine using rice burn biodiesel as pilot fuel and the combination of Compression ratio 18 and injection timing 29 degree before TDC is found to be optimum for a um, uh, dual fuel diesel engine using using uh, emulsified fuel that is um, that is made from the biodiesel and on the basis of energy and exercise analysis the standard diesel uh, injection timing is not optimum for running biogas run and uh, advancement of the injection timing and use of high, higher compression ratio is must for effective utilization of fuel in case of a biogas run dual fuel engine irrespective of the pilot fuel that has been used so this is the just some summary like the about the uh, what we found out so if we the, if we are running diesel the maximum efficiency that is our, around uh, 25 percent and uh, it is around 25 percent uh, for consider all the cases the dual fuel I guess so for if we use pilot fuel diesel we are having 25.4 and if you are using uh, uh, rice band is comparative to that only. You are using emulsify. Uh, we are getting twenty three point six two. Okay. So these are parameters and obtain. 
and the uh, performance if we try to use uh, standard injection timing so if we are using standard for that uh, yeah, efficiency maximum if 97% for rice burn biodiesel at the same time if you are running diesel engine we are diesel mode that is using only diesel fuel we are getting 27% so this is and these are the uh, relevance of the research that means diesel pass biogas if you use we have a saving of diesel as well as nox control biodiesel and biogas that is 100% saving of diesel and nox control and emulsified fuel plus biogas that means 100% saving of the diesel plus nox control enhancement okay and this can be applied for power generation for grinding mill etc as well as pumping of water for irrigation um, field provided it is used for stationary application only Okay, uh, Baskar sir, are you there? Uh, sorry, participants. Uh, as sir said, it's a uh, little bit of network issues. Yeah, Baskar sir is in. Baskar sir, you are you are the co-host now. You can share yeah, the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, a comprehensive economic analysis of the biogas run dual fuel engine needs to be carried out. That is one thing, and the study of the scrap biogas is also limited. That can be also done, and thermodynamic modeling of the combustion of biogas run dual fuel that is also lacking so with this i like to conclude my talk so thank you all and if you have any queries you can have a discussion okay uh, thank you baskar sir given uh, this uh, uh, crucial condition you have given your presentation uh, yeah. it was very uh, uh, nice uh, clean presentation uh, thank you so much uh, for your uh, uh, time sir and participants, yeah. if you have any clarifications to be done, kindly unmute yourself and go ahead with your uh, queries. I think Raju, sir. Hello.
Any queries, participants? Okay, uh, Baskar sir, uh, definitely will forward it to you uh, so that you can uh, yeah. uh, talk to them personally. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. If there is any queries there, my contact number is given in the slide you can see and email ID is also given. So if anything is there, one can uh, one can contact me and uh, a few lines I would like to tell about our institute. Our institute is Energy Institute Bangalore and here we are, it is the R&D center of Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Petroleum Technology. Here we are running MTech and PhD programs. So MTech in EV, power and energy science, energy science technology and electric vehicles. So four programs we are running here. So this is a central government institute and institute of national importance. So if any students wants to do their masters and PhD, they can come here. Okay. So we are having a good number of MOUs with PSUs. So the lab facilities that are there, they can be available. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Majnis. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bhaskar, sir. Uh, okay, uh, participants, uh, the second session will be uh, from Mr. Chandrasekhar, sir, who is uh, advisor uh, for MSR, uh, MSME, that is uh, Ministry of uh, Micro, Small and uh, Medium Scale uh, Industries. Uh, he's, a he's an advisor for MSME uh, uh, Industries. So it will be a very useful session. He'll be telling you like... Uh, uh, if you want to be an entrepreneur in biomass, biogas kind of uh, uh, industries, he'll be helping you out like how to proceed, what and all we are supposed to concentrate before uh, starting a business or all those things it will be uh, discussed on the afternoon session. So I'd request you to please log in at 1.30 sharp in the afternoon. Right? Okay. okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.